Mummy? Get away from the fire, Thomasina. What are you burning? Nothing. Just waste. Now go inside. What is this? Waste! Burn it! Good day, Mr. Bryden. Miss? I... I'll stop you there. I know what you're going to ask. No, I haven't changed my mind. There'll be no digging here, lass. Mr. Bryden, allow me to explain. There has been an astonishing development this morning. Yes? My father... ...was with your brother during the excavation. Oh. Yes. Can you believe it? I had no idea he had been here. The answer's still no, lass. I saw what happened to poor Samuel. I won't risk the same happening to anyone else. But... That's enough now. You can feast your eyes on that hovel to your heart's content, but there'll be no digging. No questions. I'm not interested. Off with you. This is not mine to take. Can't see how that will help me. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate.
Hmm. You're coming with me, little fellow. I shall name you Kenneth. I've already taken one. Hey up. Look at this, Mr. Crozier. It's my father's journal. Oh, I? Why are you showing me? Did you slip it under my door last night? Ha! Have you gone daft? Why would I have your father's journal? Never mind. Did the sketches inside mean anything to you? Looks like a load of rubbish to me. I found out my father visited Bewley 25 years ago. William Bateman, perhaps you remember him? I would have been just a lad. What were you here for? That's what I intend to find out. What do you make of this stone? Don't look like out to me. Are you familiar with any local folklore? Oh, why? The old cobbler used to tell me some right stories. Swore he sold a pair of boots to a goblin when he were a young man. A goblin, you say? I take it this cobbler was a regular at the Plough and Furrow? Never drank a day in his life. Sober as a judge. Have you been to the Devil's Toe? Yes, I'm familiar with the cairn. Some say they've seen the goblin's daughter there, playing her fiddle. Can't say I've seen her myself, mind. Do you know any other stories about this goblin? I don't have the time to be standing here gossiping about old wives' tales. Apologies. I'm having some trouble extricating a knife from a table in the plough and furrow. Might I borrow a pair of pliers? A knife, you see. I can get that out for you. That's very kind of you, Mr. Crozier. Think nothing of it. Wait here. That were a struggle. Here you are. Thank you so much. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? Never heard of it. What is it? Hmm. Never mind. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. You found old Leonard, I see. Yes, finally. I've had some rather unbelievable news, Stanley. Oh? Remarkable. Quite the coincidence, is it not? Remarkable. Just remarkable. Do you recall my father from back then? I'm afraid not. Those were my droving days, you see. I didn't spend much time in Bewley, but an interesting turn of events nonetheless. What do you know of Mother Mildred? I'll tell you what I know about Mother Mildred. She wants locking up. How so? She owes me a small fortune on her tab from years ago. Do remind her next time you see her, won't you? I'd rather not get involved, if you don't mind. Be careful who you trust, Miss Bateman. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? No, I can't say it does. Hmm. Goodbye. See you soon. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. 
Miss Bearman. I've still not been able to gain permission to excavate from Mr. Bryden. Is that so? Perhaps you could show him something that might change his mind. I've still not been able to... Is that perhaps... What else can you tell me about this Saxnot? Try not to worry yourself too much with these old stories. Leave those to the locals, Miss Bateman. Have others spoken of goblins appearing in their dreams? A dream is a dream, that is all. They merely make for good stories. I know, I know. But to answer your question, no, not to my knowledge. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sure the locals have filled you in already, lass. You cut quite the mysterious figure. Most had little to say. It's true. I do tend to keep me head down. When one gets to my age, one grows very comfortable in one's home. I like the isolation of the moors. I wouldn't change it for anything. I take it you don't get many visitors? Oh, no. Nobody bothers me. That's the perk of living so far out, huh? Just me and me hens. I used to come into Bewley more often, back before me health went to buggery. What do you think of Bewley? Whilst one could consider the villages to be rather unenlightened, this place has its charm. The market's in town today. You can see that folk want for now, dear. Is there anything else I should know about Hobbsbarrow, Mr. Shoulder? No, lass. I'm certain we will know a lot more about it by this time tomorrow. I hope so. What else can you tell me about the previous excavation? I think I covered it earlier, Miss Bateman. As you yourself said, it were a time of superstitious hysteria. What was it like, living in that period of hysteria? I kept to myself. It didn't really affect me. My hens stayed healthy and their eggs kept me well fed. If one can keep a level head in such situations, one can get by. Indeed. Is there anything else I should be aware of before my own excavation? No other ghouls I should be worried about? Ah, you know the answer to that. The corruption in that soil were all in the minds of men. What do you make of Lord Panswick? His lordship is an important man in Bewley, as I'm sure you have gathered. His family has commanded much respect here for many generations. Do you respect him as a leader? I do. He wants the best for the village. Without his influence, the railway line would have never come through here. Does he want more visitors? Aye, I believe so. He has great ambitions for Bewley and wants to share them with the world. What do you make of Mildred Walker? Who? I believe she's also known as Mother Mildred. Oh, we used to get about when we were children. Our paths have not crossed in a long while. What do you think of Charles Bryden? He is a decent man. It must have been hard for him after that terrible business with his brother. Without a doubt. I must say I had assumed you had at least spoken to him about my visit. Sorry, lass. I had no intention of giving you the runaround. Again, I can only apologize. If you don't mind me asking, what is the nature of your ongoing illness? Oh, just the ravages of age. Getting off this bench will be a small battle in itself. Something you won't need to worry about for many a year, Miss Bateman. Growing old is a blessing and a curse. And what of your recent fever? An ordeal, it were. So much tossing and turning. But I'm right as rain now, especially after a mug of ale. Don't worry about me. What are Lord Panswick's plans for Bewley? He's rebuilding an old chapel on his estate. He seeks to bring God back to these lands. But what of St Edmunds? I think Father Roach might argue God has never left. Indeed. Let's leave such arguments to them, shall we? Thank you for your time. Aye, Miss Bateman. We will speak more later.
I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Look, Mr. Bryden, my father's journal. It confirms he was with your brother during the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ha! <laughs> Take that away from me. I'll be having none of that. What do you make of this stone, Mr. Bryden? It was strapped to my father's journal. Wait a minute. Let me see that. By God. Wait here a moment. I need to get something from inside. I waited for what felt like an age. I now realise that Mr. Bryden must have been in a great debate with himself, wondering whether or not to share his own piece of the mystery with me. The goat stared at me, seemingly in pity, as I stood there in that rolling fog. Finally, Mr. Bryden emerged. Now then. As far as I know, what I have here is the only thing that Samuel brought back from Barra. Take a look. Incredible! A pair! That's been in my drawer ever since Samuel passed. I suppose it might be important, so I kept it safe. Fate is clearly playing a part in your arrival, lass. Please, Mr. Bryden. Allow me to excavate Hobbs Barrow, a place that is no more than dirt and stone. <sighs> You're not gonna give up, are you, lass? I'm not. Samuel managed to say one thing about those men that helped him. I think it's time I tell you. Yes? He stuttered out that one of those fellows could barely walk after they got out of there. Tongue-tied two of the men were. My father. You what? My father. He had an accident around 25 years ago that left him bedbound and unable to talk. Aye, could be him. My mother told me it happened in a horse riding accident. Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. Something unnatural occurred, I know it. Mr. Bryden, we must rely on our rational faculties to explain any. Promise me you'll be careful. Any sign of trouble, leave without hesitation, and we board that accursed place up again. Understood? Wait, you're giving me permission to excavate? <sighs> Aye. Against me better judgement. I don't have the energy to stop you, lass. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Don't make me regret my decision. Take Samuel's stone. Are you sure? Aye. Give it back to me when you're finished, though. I promise. Thank you. I'll be sure to show you my discoveries, Mr. Bryden. I'd rather you don't. Now then, I've got things to get on with. I don't suppose you can spare any labour to help me with the dig? Don't push your luck, lass. Market's on today. Plenty of able-bodied men about. Ta-ra now. And like that, I finally had permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. As exciting as that was, I was distracted by what Mr. Bryden said of his brother's associate. There was no doubt in my mind that father was the stricken man he spoke of. You told me he was crippled after coming off his horse. Why did you lie to me? To protect me, to stop me from following in his footsteps. You failed, and so did Charles Bryden. He should have said no. He should have never given me that stone. in good time. In good time. Finally, we shall excavate tomorrow. Though first, I need to find some workmen to assist me.
The resin has set somewhat. It's firmly gripped to the stump. Can I interest you in a pie? Finest mutton in all the county. Two pence each. No, thank you. You're missing out. Hello, Miss Tompkins. Hello. We weren't introduced earlier. My name is Thomasina. Ma'am? How do you fare, Miss Tompkins? I'm waiting for Mr Ambrose. Have you seen him? Who's that? The milkman. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. You are in the employ of Lord Panswick? Aye. He employs half a bullion one way or another. I'm in need of some help for my excavation. Do you think his lordship could lend me some of his labourers? Maybe. Might you introduce me to him? Sorry, ma'am, but his lordship doesn't take visitors. Any road, I must wait here for Mr. Ambrose. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. If Mr. Ambrose doesn't turn up and I find you some milk, would you be able to introduce me to Lord Panswick? Hmm. His lordship really doesn't like visitors, ma'am. I'll take the risk. Miss Fenchurch will be cross with me. But she'll be even crosser if I come back without fresh milk. So, do we have a deal? Aye. Bring me some milk and I'll take you to his lordship. Thank you. But hopefully Mr Ambrose will arrive soon. Have you been waiting long for Mr Ambrose? Aye. He should have been here a good two hours ago. He's here every market day, you see. He sells only the freshest milk. Miss Fenchurch swears by it. I hope Miss Fortune hasn't befallen him on his way here. I'm sure he will turn up. Oh, I hope so. Are you familiar with Hobbs Barrow? What's that? Never mind. What do you make of these stones? Oh, gives me the creeps. Why? Dunno. Just a feeling. Who is Miss Fenchurch? His lordship's housekeeper. I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk. Thank you, ma'am. But tell me if you see Mr. Ambrose, won't you? I will. <laughs> 